morning and welcome back to the veg garden where autumn has crept in very very quickly we went to the garden center the other day to pick up some things we started planting them and realized maybe you'd like to see what we're planting for the autumn so that's in what the we winter oh yes they, these will go all through the winter uh, so we're going to bring you along today show you what we've already planted um, we're going to take out the rest of the tomatoes. Now the other gardening video that we did recently was only about a week ago and already things have gone crazy in here but we need to finish the tomatoes so we can get our winter crops in. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah we've had quite a bit of rain since we were here last and it's amazing what a little bit of water has done to the place both in terms of what we want to grow and also the things that we don't want to grow. So there are a few weeds to deal with as well. But it's quite amazing what happens in such a short space of time. So these chives, I cut back to like an inch, three centimeters, four centimeters, and they're massive. <laughs> Someone said in the comments, oh, you shouldn't cut back the echinacea. Our echinacea is also got some new flowers on it. So this one down here, and they will continue probably for the next month while we kind of transition from summer into autumn. It's very cold. We had jeans and jumpers on this morning. Very cold. That's it's a relative just, term. Yes, relatively. It's like 13 degrees. But the garden is really doing well at this time of year. So we're going to get a load of brassicas in. We're going to plant some peas. We've got some more lettuce. And then maybe we're going to do some seeding as well. Maybe I'll do a green tomato chutney with the barbecue tonight. The green ones? I was going to grill some watermelon as well. This is what I love about this method of gardening. You pull some plants out one morning, give it a quick rake over, pull a couple of weeds. I think I maybe saw like less than 10 tiny ones. And now this is ready for some more plants. We only refresh them with compost once a year. We don't use any chemicals or fertilizers or amendments other than compost and then wood chip or bark in the pathways. And it does very well for us, which is excellent because we really haven't got that much time available for gardening at the moment. <laughs> Definitely a few more weeds in here. So the tomato bed that we just cleared and refreshed was planted when we did all of the other bed refreshes in spring, so it didn't get any compost at that time. There's still plenty of nutrients in it, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of some compost that we bought in bulk, and then we bagged up in some of these old, uh, old compost bags from when we bought some uh, a year or year and a half ago. Because people are always telling us we should buy compost in bulk. 
and we do. And then we reuse the old bags again and again because we like to do that kind of thing. Oh, I just thought I'd explain in case you weren't aware. These beans are going mad. Yeah, there's loads of them. Very cool. It's making up for last year. <laughs> um, when did you harvest? I harvested yesterday. No, the day before yesterday. The day before yesterday. Uh, I didn't take all of them. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I left the small ones. Yeah, okay. There's quite a few ready to harvest. They don't have to be cooked though. I no, quite I like, I like them, them just, all. yeah. Um, tonight I'm going to do a like a green bean and coriander slaw. Yeah. Why is this grass being so aggressive? Um, they are actually garlic, but from last year. Ugh. So they've just put up loads of shoots, loads of shoots from bulbs that either didn't get harvested or didn't grow properly. Okay. Looks like we lost a couple of bean plants here. There's only two. Oh, there was only two. I counted four. One put a pole. Yeah. Uh, but the other two never came up. Oh, so okay. Before I then counted spinach Ah, gotcha. Yeah. These haven't done as well, but they're still. I think it's because they're in the shade. Yeah, probably. Okay, go some more. More. Yep. Do you want to flip it around so that it actually yeah. catches on that end like That's that? Nice. Oh! <laughs> so this is the geogrid that we have left over from when we did the lime creek floor. Well, the underfloor heating on the lime creek floor. Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, do we want to cut it here? Yeah, just staple it first try? and then I'll cut it off afterwards. Okay. We still, since the, uh, this trellis did so successfully, we'll try something similar but different for the peas. You're doing math while gardening. 20, yes. 42. <laughs> That's how old I wish I still was. <laughs> <laughs> the years they just disappear. Should we have a comment guessing game? Yeah, guess how old guy is gonna be in December. <laughs> FYI, I turned fifty this year, just for context. Be kind. <laughs> The weather is all over the place today. Autumn. We've had a lot of rain recently. Can you talk about what you're planting here? Seeds. Can you elaborate <laughs> on what you're planting here? I am planting what I in Australia would call snow peas, or in the UK would call munch too, or in Portugal they call oof. Ovilha? Ovilha? Ovilha. Ovilha. Come tudo. Mange tu. Eat everything. Mm -hmm. There you go. This is an excellent variety of the type uh, eat everything with violet flowers. Yeah, okay. 50 centimeters. Apparently, I'm going to go a little bit more aggressive than that, just in case they don't work. Two. Can you show me what the beans look like? Oh, right, they're brown. Mm. This is not a science, people. The same. We don't know what we're doing most of the time. We just make it up, see what happens. Sometimes we do some research for the important stuff. For the less so important stuff. The fun stuff. We just wing it. 
because life's too short to spend at a computer. And I know that we've had many comments <laughs> saying things like how we have green fingers and our gardening skills are getting better. There's really no skill in this. It's just trial and error. I'm not going to call it luck, but we just stick things in and see what happens. Well, I think we are definitely getting more intuitive with things like timings, spacings. I'm not. I'll okay. just chuck it in. I mean, the packet said 50 centimeters apart. I'm doing like 25 and I'm going to put in another couple for good luck since they're already out of the packet. I mean, that's nothing about having excellent gardening skills, but just having a go. Having a go. And as much as Kylie is 100% right, as usual, we are just winging it, having a go, having a bit of fun, seeing what grows. There are some kind of guiding principles that we have picked up in our research and our just consumption of other people's gardening content, mostly from that kind of no dig, no till perspective, which is essentially our job is to make the right environment, put the garden in the right place with the right amount of sun exposure, make a nice bed, Try not to disturb the soil so much. Keep it planted as much as possible so that there is nutrient kind of flow and cycle through the sun to the leaves into the roots for all the things that live in the garden. And then, you know, kind of keep on top of the weeds so they don't take over and the things that we want to grow have a better chance. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it really. Um, but those are like the, the guiding principles that we're trying to follow. Disturb the soil as little as possible keep the soil planted as much as possible and there's probably another one or two that I'm forgetting but that's kind of what we're aiming to do as much as possible. We are not really growing anything, the soil is. Our job is just to feed the soil and make sure it's in its best condition and then the plants do the rest of the work for us. It sounds very profound, almost like you heard that somewhere. I did hear that somewhere. I'm trying to remember what his name is. Farmer Jesse. Farmer Jesse, because my brain is sometimes not that good. So Farmer Jesse from No-Till Growers taught me that one and it's correct. I like that approach. My job is just to make healthy soil. That one is not great. I might be able to salvage some of it though. So we are cheating again, or being efficient, I should say. We picked up all these little plug plants from our favorite garden center. We've got lots of brassicas for the winter garden. And the trouble with brassicas, things like cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower, of which I believe are all on this plate, they kind of all look the same. There are differences. These ones over here are smaller than these. Some of the leaves are a bit more spiky than others, which are a bit more rounded. But I don't know what they all are. So I think I've separated them into the ones that look similar. Um, but I guess we'll find out when they grow a bit bigger. Fortunately, most of them have a similar kind of spacing, which I think is about 60 centimeters each way, more or less. Uh, we might go a bit tighter than that just because we tend to lose a few. And we don't need massive cabbages or cauliflowers or broccoli heads because we're only two tiny people. Although we are a little bit larger than we used to be. I'm going to work on that soon. These are a bit leggy, so I'm planting them a bit deeper, kind of up to here, rather than to the top of where the, the plug is, just so they don't flop all over the place. The way of plants aren't well. I'm 
this. We're having this pepper green. So all the plugs that we bought are planted, apart from these five here, which are something that is new to us. These are kohlrabi, which is kind of like a turnip, but a bit different. I don't know what colour these ones are. You can definitely get them in like a purple or a white, so it will be a nice surprise. They have a slightly purple stem, but the swelling above it is white, so I think these might be white ones. We've never grown them before, whereas everything else, the cauliflower, the broccoli, the cabbage, We've grown before and it always does really well here. Also at this end, uh, previous to today, I planted some allium things, some onions and some leeks. We've got 20 leeks at the end, 50 onions here. These are white onions. We'll probably try and do some red onions at some point as well. Um, but I'm gonna stick in these kohlrabi here. I don't know what the spacing is on these, so I'm just going like 30 centimeters because I don't think they get as big as a like a cabbage or a broccoli. I don't really know but we don't cook with this a lot, so I don't really want them to be huge anyway. And controlling the, the spacing is one way to control the size of the eventual harvest to a degree. So I believe these grow a bit like a beetroot. It's like a swelling of the root above the ground, um, rather than being something that you dig up like a carrot or just pluck off the leaves or the a heart like a cabbage. We'll see how these do. Always nice to try something different. That is not even 30 centimeters. Anyway, we'll see what happens. So have you enjoyed your morning of gardening? Not really. Oh. I want to finish my sanding. <laughs> you want to or? Uh, yes, I want it done. <laughs> <laughs> but one day of it, half day of it left. And we keep pushing it and pushing it because it's like, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that. And, uh, yeah, it's almost done. I just want it done. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. So whilst the sanding is not quite finished, the gardening is. We planted all the things we needed to plant after clearing all the things that we needed to clear. Kylie's just finishing up with watering everything in. And then we will probably go and do some sanding. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so... But we will join you back in the garden in a few weeks or a few months time to see how some of this stuff has grown on and we'll give you a bit of a tour and keep you up to date with all the growing related things. But that's it for now. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs>